Undead Murder Force fans. Excuse me if this video is a little later in the day, but I just had to make sure I did it. What's good? You made me master so here. You're master nice up the round table. I'm gonna be one subscribe to that spin. And we are here with Undead Murder Force. It has completed, and there's actually a lot to say. Now, if you guys have been seeing my reviews of the shows that's been going on this season, you may have noticed that a handful of those shows I've been talking about isn't the most positive. Some shows have let me down, some shows are just eh, some big shows I need to review this season hasn't finished yet, and some shows are simply just not going to be done by the end of the season. But here's the thing about this season, right? Those shows that I felt this kind of was trickling down, it's kind of a mutual feeling. I have been seeing lists and comments, Jade, of people who have been talking about this season and shows for this season, and when everything is said and done, things is kind of, people are kind of calling it weak, to be real with y'all. However, we come to Undead Murder Farce, and in my opinion, at least what I understand, I didn't think many people was actually watching this. This seems like the type of niche show in the first place that first and foremost would do much better with the English dub. Yeah, I said it. But get that dub though. But I shit y'all not. Real talk, when I was looking at list of top shows of this season, especially even, this started last week before the season was even concluded, Undead Murder Farce was number one on plenty of those lists. In the season where the score starts to go down, depending on the finales and how things are settling up, the show that held up the most this season, in my opinion, on a consistent basis, is, has rose to the top spot. Now, I don't mean to be this guy, but to be 100% with you guys, there's a difference between favorite and best. And honestly, my favorite show of the season and my best show of the season, Undead Mother Forest is now occupy either one of those spots. But like I said, from a consistent basis, from start to finish, this show has been, at the very least, solid as hell. Never a dull moment, not a bad episode, really nothing bad to say about it. Jokes aside, I've been posting. Now, I have done two videos on Undead Murder Farce already, so when it comes to my feelings and thoughts on the show, you pretty much get the gist of it. However, since my last video, this show, actually no, I was wrong. It hasn't been consistent. It got better. Now, at the end of the show, our home conflict, I understand I briefly talked about some of that where we cut, we came to the point of fighting over that black diamond had all char original characters mixed with like, you know, past characters and past doing that justice, doing historical themes correctly. Undead murder farce paying homage to undead creatures such as vampires, werewolves, etc. The attention to detail on this is really an understatement. The respect it was given is off the chain. And of course the visuals was hidden as well. Especially that part where they was fighting in front of the moon, in front of the moon, which I believe I related to Case of Vanitas. Imagine if Case Study of Vanitas and this show came out the same season. We would not have been ready. But despite all of that, and all that crazy stuff that was going on, as good as it, as it was, I have to say, in my opinion, the best part of the show was the last few episodes. The werewolf conflict that kind of wrapped this whole thing up. I can't keep saying that. I mean, obviously there's more afterwards, but, but we'll get to that later, right? Because when it comes to the werewolf conflict, the farce itself, you really kind of have to put it next to the previous one, yes. But the way these two stories are kind of told a little bit differently. And first and foremost, like I said, Sherlock Holmes, Lupin, all that going on is good. However, compared to the werewolf story, it kind of felt like it slick diluted the last one. Because while once again this conflict showed our main three casts getting separated, it really kind of highlighted more this time around of them having to handle things on their own. A super rude, a super rude, we understand that. And without a body, Anya Rindo is really only going to <laughs> do one thing, i.e. try to solve the case. But in my opinion, to be real, the highlight of this kind of was, well not even kind of, let's just be real with it. Shizuku, the maid, ladies and gentlemen. And don't get me wrong, what happened to her was unfortunate. She got attacked by a wolf. She got thrown down a waterfall. She, what looked like was being saved, ended up being a kidnapping and imprisonment, and then put on trial. Ugh. However, seeing her go through all that was kind of really a breath of fresh air. Cause she'd been attached to Anya the whole time, Anya Rindo, and it's just like, you know, without her around, how would she handle things? And since it worked out, I mean, favor of water. Just seeing her go through it the way she did just brought more of an enjoyment factor into it. And no, I'm not just saying that because of the fan service that was added in. But since you brought it up, it was a nice touch. And it was actually something I really didn't expect. Like, that's actually the thing about it. In the past two conflicts, 
with the drug, the herbine drug, it's kind of like an aphrodisiac. And then her clothes kind of get sh chopped up, exposing the white bra. And the mission of presumably a lesbian vampire after her ass. The one with the BBL. Waking up butt naked, underneath butt naked woman. I guess one of the big things that actually surprised me in this show is of all characters, she's like who ended up being <laughs> the biggest target for fan service. In a show where you really wouldn't think a target of fan service would even be there. You gotta be real, they kinda just kept playing on that as much as, not really as much as they can, but as much as they can when it still made sense. Freaking Suguru and Aya is gonna come back to her. Suguru gonna be like, hey, I got your clothes, I, I got your clothes, I got you, I got you, I found everything. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like you're not as useless as I think you were. Of course not, you know I got your bag. Hold on, where's the underwear? I said I got your bag, not your ass. And he ruined it, y'all. <laughs> can't forget the draws, nigga. Like when she's gonna just flip the script right back on him, like, you know, once again, just chiming in every here and there. If he died, it wouldn't be that big deal. I kinda hope he dies, blah, blah, blah. Just going back on that type of shit. Sorry, but not sorry. I couldn't blame her. So we don't forget the panties, nigga. And really another huge highlight for Shizuku is when the moment came when those guys from last episode was kinda coming back. A couple of them anyways. She kinda got her rematch. But that's a highlight, I guess at the same time, handsomely lost. Not lose in the sense that she got beat up or that she got taken down. It's more so in the sense where, you know, last fight, well, her name was Carmelia, I believe. Camelia, basically, she tried to get the jump on Shizuku, didn't work, and kind of had a level playing field for a while until it was time for her to leave. This time around, because Shizuku was still not wearing any other wear she got to see, and she had to quit pointing out. Like I said, they added these moments in there, and who else was it going to be? Let's be real, Suku was going to be the one. I mean, who else would make sense? Who else would you put that in front of it actually mean anything at the same time? time? But because, as Camilla pointed out, since she uh, Suku got a taste of the venom before, and the drug, of course, she kind of, you know, it's not going to work as well the next time, so she kind of just did something else. Something that we don't even completely understand. Which is hallucinated out of the the colors all went around there, they didn't know she was surrounded by it, just naked woman again. The woman that she has attacked beforehand, that get joined the blood beforehand, is all of a sudden now a butt naked attacking her? This is... Did this kill a kill? And then she just, just wakes up and then she left her. And she's just saying she'll get her next time. That's why I say she handsomely lost here because it kind of just felt like to me that this was just to embarrass her. And she was well prepared for the fight this time. She was able to use her tricks on you, was able to work. She, she still just gave you the let you live conflict that now you're officially after her rather than her being after you and she caught you with no panties. No pun intended, but this, this really was just to expose Shizuku's ass. No, all puns intended. And literally. Shizuku's my favorite character, isn't she? But another big thing about this last farce, right? Really, it's one of those things where this is actually my favorite farce. Now I'll be real with y'all. I'm not the biggest detective. I'm not big on detective stories and stuff like that. However, I was at least able to figure out that it was a freaking werewolf that did this. And no, that's not because a vampire took out a vampire in the first farce. As, it, it, it's just one of those things where it was obvious that a human didn't do it. Because the problem Aya was talking about, you know, a, a werewolf had to jump out of the window just to make this work. And obviously they had to leave from there and break through the window to get out of there so they didn't break in in the first place. However, it wouldn't be able to carry a human like that. It, 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 to me, it was kind of obvious. Everything else around it, Noah and Louis all being the same person, aka Jatet. Uh, ain't gonna look, ain't gonna lie, not so much. Not gonna get too much into detail, because I pretty much be doing the whole last episode over again. However, damn, it was a lot of shit. <laughs> like, a lot of shit where you kind of just listen to it, where you all kind of just find yourself tuning out by accident. You had to rewind it back and be like, hold on, wait. However, apparently, right at the tail end there, when Jatet was like, I'm leaving this village, and they were telling him no because she was a. If you can pronounce that word, you cheated. Basically, the most top flight King Wolf type shit. And basically, Arya was like, well, she was wrong in her deduction because she was wrong about your test motive. She thought she was doing all this for revenge, but no, she was doing all this to save the Whip Girls. And it was one of those things where even though she is guilty of the initial crime because of the deductions we put on you for that crime was wrong, she let her go. And after Sigurd had to put in some work, though. You know what's funny about Suguru? Everything. What I was saying, right? <laughs> you know how he had that big fight with the guy and, uh, you know, the whole Sherlock Holmes conflict, Watson, and all that stuff? 
Despite all that that was going on, everything else was light work. Big zombie dude took him out. Three werewolves took him out. The tent and the darkness took him out. And I like how he kind of put it in perspective when he was finding Jatet, because I was like, I know I'm saying her name wrong, aren't I? Because he noticed how the way she was looking at it, the way she was talking, did not match, because at the time she still looked human. And then when she had a problem with that and started talking more sinister, now he's like, now you sound like a monster. Make you look and sound like the very thing that he's been trained to kill in the pre story before he even met Anya. He may just be the open act, but the open act has to set it off. This actual clown walking around and telling him jokes. And of course, he still got the black diamond, and he got a hit, and they have to go to London, and uh, her body, Aya's body, Aya window, it should not be cut up and still intact. That is the next destination. As we move forward, at the end of the season, there's been disappointing shows that's getting announced season two. It just has not. Spring season, season two announcements, the hype was real even when it was obvious. Over here, it's like, bruh. And the biggest shows I know of this guy season 2 coming is freaking the vending machine show in My Happy Marriage. My Happy Marriage when the show in my opinion is already over and the vending machine, I'm not about to... <laughs> Man, let's just call it what it is. This show not getting a season 2 is freaking criminal. I'm gonna investigate you next, bitch. Matter of fact, let me stop trying to sell a show. This show was amazing. If you don't think it was consistent and solid like the whole time, that means it was just rising up the entire time. Don't tell me this was your background show of the season. You, you, you background this show? I'm gonna slap you. You have to pay very close attention to what's going on in the show. Then you're gonna get lost. I already know I'm gonna need to watch it two times. As in when that dub comes out. Give me the dub, bruh. Hey man. Even now, I still don't think enough people watch this show. And when it comes to ratings and stuff like that, of course the number of people getting behind the show and watching it in the first place is the biggest factor when it comes to season twos, three, four, fives, and six. However, in my understanding, everyone who watched this show freaking loved it. So if nothing else, whoever's in charge of greenlighting this show for season two, Take into consideration that the love is real, and whenever it comes, people are going to be anticipating it. More shows is getting re redo, which is reason season two is redone is more than ever nowadays. Do not let Undead Mother Frost get lost in the sauce. Share this video, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, subscribe to the spin move. Mm -hmm. It ain't over. The guy with the M on the cane, it, it ain't over.